Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here for an update video, and I think I'm going to be starting to do videos once a week instead of once a month, because it seems to be too long in between for me to remember all the details of what I wanted to say or the passion behind what I wanted to say is very much over. <laughs> for example, um, I have I had written down to talk about how I was reorganizing my floss like at the beginning of the month and now it's like that's old news but I haven't shared it with you yet <laughs> so I think I'm gonna try to do weekly videos um, and hopefully they'll be shorter I know those of you who do long weekly videos are probably gonna laugh at that but if I'm only doing so far I've been kind of doing like one project a week and a project and a week weekend project. So if I, my thought right now is that most weeks I might be able to film on a Monday, um, maybe a Tuesday if it's a holiday on a Monday. But if I film on Monday morning, then I can cover what I did the week before and the weekend that just passed, and then put all that stuff away or the the previous week's things away and get out the new week's stuff after I film my video. And it might just be a little bit more seamless and I won't have to drag it all out again three or four weeks later to talk to you about it. <clears throat> so that's the plan. Um, school for my kids starts um, early to mid-August depending on the kid. So it might be more consistent when school starts but we'll see if I can get a few in um, more frequently this summer and see how that goes. Um, to start with, I thought I would show a little bit of haul. For Mother's Day, I got my husband got me a chart um, that I forgot to share last time. I had it, but I forgot to share it. So he got me Roses of Province by Mirabilia, which is pretty. And I, uh, Teresa, the little stitcher, she finished this recently. Gorgeous. So that's going in my Mirabilia stash. And I thought about maybe showing all my Mirabilia patterns today when I showed you that, but I decided not to. If anybody really wants to see my Mirabilia stash, it's not huge, um, but I do have quite a few patterns that I haven't started yet. And a few of them are kitted, um, but not all of them. The other one I got is not for me. It is for my daughter whenever she's old enough to learn how to cross stitch. I saw this and had to get it. She loves purple. It's her favorite color and she loves cats. And we are a cat family. We have one cat and she just thinks kittens are the cutest thing. This is a how to, how to learn a cross stitch kit. It only has full crosses and back stitching so the white in the paws and the face is not even stitched at all it comes with four colors and 11 count Ada so it's perfect for a beginner stitcher so she's only four but when she gets a couple more years two or three more years she'll be ready to learn how to stitch and I'm ready <laughs> I'm ready to teach her so far she's really excited whenever I stitch and she does the whole pulling the needle for me when um, when I poke it up in the right spot she'll pull it and so hopefully she'll continue to show interest I mean and when I'm stitching constantly you know in her presence it's natural to be a curiosity for her so um, <clears throat> and I wanted to I'm I'm very behind on floss tube um, and I I feel bad about that because I like to keep up to date with everybody, but I don't want to watch things out of order or skip people and then be afraid that I would forget to go back and watch them. I don't want to make anybody, I don't want to like rank people and be like, oh, well, this person's super great. So I have to list, watch their recent one right now and forget about all the other ones I haven't watched yet. Um, I want to just watch, watch them all chronologically as they are posted and for the longest time I was about at least two weeks behind and I like to thank Stitch Mania for that 
because <laughs> there's a lot of extra videos posted during St Stitch Mania, and I was a little extra busy in May for some reason, and and it just it kind of all compounded, and I got really far behind. But um, this past past few days, I've had a little extra stitching time, a little extra video watching time, and I'm I think I'm only a little over a week behind now, so I'm I'm making progress, and I'm hoping. I was hoping to get more caught up, um, but it doesn't look like I'll be able to now. I had I had planned, my husband was out of town and he's coming home early, earlier than expected, so my free evenings have been cut short. So I was expecting another two evenings to be able to watch a whole bunch of floss tube <laughs> and get caught up. And I, can't, I won't have those two, two extra evenings now. So. Um, but I'm a little bit caught up, so hopefully I'll keep getting caught up. I feel really bad when I go in and post a comment and it's been two weeks since it's been posted and it's been two weeks since the last person has commented, but at least I'm watching them and at least I'm commenting on the ones that I have something to say. I don't comment on every video, I, but if I have something that's just like, I just have to say something, you know, I will comment. So that, I hope I get caught up soon. Um, the other thing, with the floss, I was kind of lost my stitchy bug a little bit on one of my projects this past month. So whenever that one came up, it was like, uh, what else can I do <laughs> instead of stitch on that? So one of the things I w did, which I'd been kind of waffling about for the longest time, was I de-kitted my travel piece, my grapes piece, that I had kept in my travel bag for probably a year at least, maybe more. Um, and that was a that was a hard decision to make, but I decided to, like a lot of the projects I was starting to work on needed the floss that was in that travel um, box. <coughs> I had a box like this in my travel bag that was full of floss for that grapes golden kite piece. And um, a lot of the golden kites that I was starting to stitch on again at home called for colors that were not duplicated in my main stash. They were only, only in that travel box. So I'd have to keep getting up and going to get the new one or, or pull the box to my stitchy chair. And then when I went to go somewhere, I'd have to remember to bring it. So I decided to just unkit that one, put all the flosses back into my main stash and choose something new for my travel piece because for a while I was working on you make my heart melt which was the penguins piece and once that was finished I decided to, I would choose make sure I still have time <laughs> once I <coughs> once my you make my heart melt piece is finished I decided to pick a new travel piece that would be more travel friendly it would be all contained and I wouldn't need to bring the bobbined floss from my main stash. I wouldn't need to bring any of that with me. So I've chosen a kit as my new travel piece so that it's all there um, and it's thin. It's really perfect for travel. Um, and then in the future, if I'm choosing a piece that's not a ready-made kit, I was thinking of um, Jessie from Jessie and Marie Does Stuff, she likes to cut pre-length um, str like strands for her projects. I think she does that for all of her projects. I was thinking of maybe doing something like that for um, for s some of my smaller whips that are that I'm kidding up myself if I'm going to bring them along. Like my secret stitch that I, I shared in my whip parade, I have a, a whip that's a secret from you. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to make that my travel piece once school starts up again. And that's one that I'm kidding myself. So I think I might just cut lengths of the colors I need. And so it can be kind of a, a kit like project that I can bring with me and I won't have to take the all the whole bobbin of all of those colors in case I need it for something that I'm working on at home. So all that to say, I reorganized my entire floss box because in the past I had all of my floss in here 
this is my double-sided thread organizer box. These are called a thread organizer and they're meant for sewing thread and I actually have a second one. My first one I got of these is for my sewing thread and then I realized people were using it for floss. I'm like, I, I need me one of those. So this does hold an entire set of DMC and for the longest time I had all my duplicates in here as well. Um, except for the ones that were in my travel box, which was a full a full normal size one of these was what my grapes colors were in. So once I de-kitted de that, I no longer had room for all my duplicates in addition like and there's there's lots of room in here still. You'll see they're kind of like really loose in some places because some of my bobbins are not full. You know, there there's like certain ranges that get used more and so a lot in that range is has a very like you know half or quarter filled bobbin and so I was debating if I should you know have a rule to keep <coughs> to keep one duplicate only and no more than one but that didn't really seem to help. It seemed like it was still too full in certain areas. And and I wanted to add, pardon me. I wanted to add the new colors, which I haven't bobbinated yet, but they're in here. They, these are the new colors from that, that recent box that's um, had some brand new colors. It's only available in that special box. They're not available by the skein right now. I heard a little birdie maybe on Instagram saying there's going to be more colors coming out in September. So that would be interesting. But currently I was going to put these in here too and with these and with the ones from Grapes, I decided to take out all of my duplicates. So this is just one of everything and um, if it's loose, it's loose. It'll I'll be more motivated to go pull my duplicate from my duplicate stash sooner than I might normally because it's so loose in here and it might make them sit nicer if it's not so loose. My duplicates are kept in these like shoebox style um, boxes. I received a someone's stash from, oh, it's probably been maybe six years ago, some someone gave me her floss stash. I don't remember if she gave me anything else um, because she was no longer stitching and knew I stitched and wanted to give it to somebody who would use it, and I sure did. So she had these, she had hers, her, her floss was kept in floss away bags, which I don't do. And for the longest time, I just kept this as like a library of her colors and when I ran out of one I would come here first and and pick it out and before I went shopping for a new one but I've reorganized it now so that this is these are my duplicates and they are I have them in here by um, in just regular storage size baggies with the numbers written on them so this is the DMC range of ev all everything in here and back a few months ago, I bought every color at, D at at Joann's just because they were raising their prices and I wanted to make sure to get them. So there's at least one of everything. And then any of the duplicate bobbins that I had in my box, I put in here also. Um, so I'll check the bobbin ones first and then I'll go to the um, Hank versions. So this is all my backup floss two of those and then I just keep those in my closet and then I thought I would share these are like the remnants from when I had like six or seven boxes of my floss in these kinds of boxes this is the last um, box of that because when I had when I had regular colors in here I ended up the, at the at the end I added all my variegated so those are all the DMC variegated I don't hardly ever use them, but I've got them just in case. I still have my needle case in this one. There's some 
skein ends from my kits that I make and I just haven't gotten around to winding them onto the bobbin that they go with. And then this is another one that I keep all my Krennics and these are some like satin, DMC satin, DMC metallics, and then Mill Hill beads. And these are organized numerically so I can find them. And extra bobbins. So that's some of my other stash for flosses and things. So I also keep um, my gentle arts threads in this tiny little box. I have them bobbinated and um, they're all in here by alphabetically because they use words instead of numbers like DMC does. And this is for my Joyful World Sal. And in this box, I'll keep like B5200 or anything else that is a DMC equivalent that I'm using for that month. Um, and I do sometimes take this in my travel bag as well because if I'm going to a family gathering or something, on the weekend, then I'll bring this along instead of my travel piece so I can get progress for my weekend stitching. And then if I have beads that I want to use like with a project as I'm working, I'll sometimes just pop them in a baggie. This, these are the Krennic and beads for the Snow Queen that I've been working on. So super low key, <laughs> I just, you know, keep these separate and um, that's how I do it. Now I can show you my finishes. So, uh, last time I, for I was going to go watch my old video and I forgot, but I believe last time I was very close to finishing You Make My Heart Melt and I finished it and I framed it. So, this is You Make My Heart Melt. By Heaven and Earth Designs, this is the freebie. And um, I, I put it, I found this frame at Michael's with a coupon, because <laughs> that's how I roll. So it was super reasonable. It's an eight by 10 frame with a five by seven opening. And I was especially excited that this had a cream mat. It's not white because I realized there is not actually any white in this piece. Like all the light colors are off-white and cream and ecru and peach and whatnot. There's no white. So a white matte would have looked bad, too stark. So this is a black frame with a cream matte and I think it is perfect because it brings out the black in the penguins and the cream in the penguins. And I laced it on the back and it's the same size. It just fits in here, you know, flat. It's not wrapped around. Um, so that works. Now we just need to make time to hang it up on my daughter's wall. She's very excited. And I am excited because this is a full coverage piece that is now off of my whip list and it's finished and it's cute. And those little stitches are so adorable. A lot of glare, I'm sorry, but I'm trying. So, there's my finish. I'm finishing a lot of stuff this year, and I think it's thanks to you guys keeping me on task and motivated to stitch and motivated to have something to show you. So that's good. My other finish for June is July. <laughs> this is my you make my heart, uh, my joyful world sal piece for July. And I really like how this one turned out. This is probably my favorite so far. I love the colors, the, the bright, cheerful colors, and like the way that this looks like a beach with the liberty uh, as the water, you know, kind of white capping onto the little sandy parts there. I used my yellows are DMC, my sand was DMC, and this yellowy green color here um, was DMC, but the rest of them were gassed. Oh, and this pink, the light pink um, was DMC also. Those are the colors I didn't have. Then I just used DMC. 
And that can segue nicely into my whips. Last weekend I started August, which will look like this with a dog and a whole bunch of fun lazy daisy flowers. I'm really looking forward to that. I like lazy daisies. I think they're fun. So here's my start on the dog. I didn't get hardly any time to stitch last weekend. Um, like just a tiny bit on Saturday and not a single stitch on Sunday. But is that focusing? But I got a, all the onyx done in the puppy dog and he'll have like white in between and different colored eyes and a tongue but I got all the black done <laughs> on the August dog so there's that start I'm hoping to get more progress this weekend probably not as much as I was hoping to because I was expecting to have half the weekend to myself with only a couple kids rather than three kids and a husband so there's a lot a lot less stitching time will actually happen this weekend than I was hoping it would happen but hopefully I'll still get some good progress done on that one my new travel piece as I mentioned is a thin easily transportable piece this is my Bodium castle this is a nice small one the actual fabric is the size of this you know pattern so it's really small everything's in here the fabric the threads in the pocket of my travel bag I have my highlighter and my um, scissors so I don't need that in here but um, last time you saw this I'll show you what it looked like and here's what it looks like now I have started the third color on the castle so I'm using the kit floss and I have when I first started this I realized they wanted me to stitch it one over one on 18 count which I don't like the look of it's way too show through for me I prefer two over one on 18 count so that's what I'm doing however I'm clearly gonna run out of floss and the first this white color cream color is what I started with and I managed to get all the cream in the castle finished before I ran out of kit floss and there's just a little bit more down here um, in the ducks and the flowers and I figured I'll just use DMC equivalent for the rest of that <clears throat> conversion for the rest of it the next color I chose was this beige color and I only did the columns and I ran out right there if you can see this chunk is the DMC equivalent for that beige color and it is not the same and there's more of this color in here and here and here which is like in recessed back from the main columns so I figured well it was okay if it doesn't really match in those recessed sections because they're kind of in the shadows but I didn't even manage to finish all the all of the pillars so what I decided to do I was I, I tried the equivalent and I don't like how it looks it's too different for using neck right next to another color and I should have started with the big call the big pillar first and like I may not have run into such a problem but I'm not gonna unpick it I emailed my LNS and they carry anchor so I think what I'm gonna do is for the main colors in the castle I'll go ahead and buy the anchor flosses and I'll probably take this with me just to make sure they really do match and um, just for the castle colors because I figured if the other colors run out and I have to do an equivalent it's it's leaves and grass and flowers and it's not gonna matter if there's like one shade off because that's nature that's the way it's gonna be in nature no two leaves are exactly the same so but for these smooth castle walls it just didn't look right to me so this is kind of a funny you know orangey shade that I'm adding now this third color um, but that's that's what it looks like in the picture so I'm, I'm going with it um, so that's where I'm at now that's my current travel piece and I'm 
currently able to stitch on it during my kids' swimming lessons, which they have one more week of swimming lessons. But then I don't know how much time I'll get on it, get to work on it until school starts again in August. And at some point I'm gonna switch out to do my secret stitching um, in for my travel piece when school starts so that I can get that done and then maybe I'll go back to this. So this might not be finished before I go back to my secret stitching, but um, it'll probably stay a travel piece. Like I'll work on the secret project till it's done and then I'll bring this back out. So I will, if I'm, if I'm filming weekly, you'll, you'll be appraised of what I'm doing. You'll know, you'll know what's going on. So my next regular whip is my temperature garden as we, we've seen. And we got pretty hot in, in June. I have finished June and started July, just today, I did July. Today um, may max out my temperature guard, <laughs> temperature chart. It has been, people say it's supposed to be 111, 112. Um, so whether or not the source that I'm getting my temperatures from says it will get that high. When I was, when I was getting the cult, the temperatures for this one this morning, it said today was supposed to be a high of 109. So we'll see if that source goes all the way up to 111. Um, because my max temperature range for the hot range of this is 110 plus. So we'll see if I get to stitch that color. <laughs> Uh, the bad part is I actually had to run some errands in that heat, but thankfully I'm here in my air conditioned home now and these bright colors, bright reds and burgundies are really fun and colorful on here, but they're a little bit miserable to live through. Um, but that's, that's the way it goes living in a hot climate. So, and I know it gets worse. I've heard some um, southern states, South Texas and Arizona and places like that get up even hotter. So I, I can't complain. <laughs> so that's that one. And, and then I did, um, June was wine and whips in Stitch Mania. And so I chose two pieces to do that were restarts. And I discussed this before, but um, I, my first restart was the stitching shelf which is a freebie from heaven and earth designs i started it up in this corner because i was planning to do the entire piece extreme cross country and then i decided i i couldn't handle it and i am i decided to crop it to only do this area in the middle so i frogged this crop cut out my fabric to make it you know, only fit this size so I can save the rest of the fabric and restarted it with that same color. And I was able to do of like 10 stitches up here. I hop it, skipped and jumped to her hair, did all of that color in her hair, a tiny bit in the lamppost and a start on her hair. So exciting, so exciting. I'm really, really, really happy with how this turned out because, um, it's so much more enjoyable to see the characters like coming into focus like right away. Like I don't have to wait wade through, I don't know, 10, 20 pages of background before I get to the people. So here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. So here's the top corner and I counted triple quadruple counted over to her hair and this is her he head she'll have like her bun right here and this is the profile of her face and a little bit of the lamp had that color in it and then all the way over here again triple checked I, I compared let's get this up here I compared it to this I compared it to this I went up and compared it to this. So I double checked like everything multiple times to make sure this lady's head was in the right spot. So 
here's hoping <laughs> it's in the right spot. Um, that's the top of her head. She's got a lot more of this color in her hair than this lady did, so I wasn't able to get as much done on her before the week ran out, but I'm definitely a lot more excited to pull this out and work on it now than I would have been before I restarted it because it was just so boring before. And now it's like, ooh, let's put in some more work and see more of this picture come to life. This is my area where I frogged. You can see the page that I had started. And it's still a little fuzzy with the fibers, but since it's full coverage, I'm gonna go over it anyway. So I didn't bother like making sure every last strand was fuzz was picked out because it's going to be covered so it doesn't matter um so that's a stitching stitchers retreat so my second wine and whips piece was quick stitch iris by josephine wall and heaven and earth designs and i started this ages ago probably this is um printed in 2006 so that's probably when i started it um and I stitched it on 25 count, two over one, which is what they recommend on, in their patterns. Um, and I didn't know any better. I'd only ever stitched two over one on 18 count for my full coverage pieces for the Golden Kite. So when I started this, I'm like, well, they suggest that, let's give it a try. And I kind of got bogged down in it and it ended up just sitting in my, in my um, box, you know, cross stitch box for years, literally, um, 11 years. So when Wine and Whips came along, I figured this was another one that I could restart and try to do one over one on 25 count because that's what it seems a large majority of the floss tube community likes for full coverage pieces. Um, I really like one over one on 28 count, but since so many of you like one over one on 25 and this doesn't have a ton of dark colors, um, figured it was worth a try. And um, I got it, finally got it all picked out. It took, it was a lot, it took a lot longer to pick this one out than my other one because it had multiple colors in it and it, and it was full crosses. The other one was only half stitch. Um, but I finally got it done. I think I went a little bit over into the weekend just to get it done. I didn't want to leave any of the old stitching in when I put it away for the week because I didn't know when I was going to get it out again and I wanted just to be done with the old stuff and have it just a fresh start. Only the new stuff left. So because of that, um, I made a little video when I was about halfway through to show the comparison between two over one and one over one because I know that might be a curious thing for some of you to see the difference on the same piece. So I will show that video now. Hey, I wanted to just share with you real quick um, the difference between two strands and one strand of on 25 count because I was noticing the stark difference between the two. This is my iris piece that I am probably talking about in my video. This is the original stitching, which is two strands over one. And see how tight that is? It's like really fat and puffy and kind of tight and spilling over into the surrounding areas. And then this is one over one which is very smooth and fits nicely in the space and is not fat and puffy, but it's still, you know, nice stitches. So I was just kind of shocked at how the dramatic difference between this look, because there's like multiple colors in some of these spaces between that look and this look. And I much prefer this look for sure. Um, it <clears throat> it just is really smooth and pretty, and and it shows the picture, lets the picture come and be the focal point rather than the stitches. And for me, and obviously some of the space is not all the way filled in, but 
this just seemed too cluttered and crowded and I know some people like two strands but I thought for me I would definitely prefer one strand on 25 count or 28 count um, but just for those of you who may not have seen a direct comparison there it is and I hope that was helpful and now that you've seen that I'll show you a picture of where this was last time you saw in my last update with um, what it used to look like and here's what it looks like now. You can see this is kind of where I used to be. And this is, it's a really small piece. Definitely a quick stitch. And this is where I am now that I'm done. I, I got the first two diagonals done. So the tiny little triangle in the corner and then the next full 10 stitch wide diagonal. And that's all I had a time to stitch since the picking took me so long. But I'm really happy that I restarted it. I'm really happy with the coverage, with the smoothness, and so nice. I'm really happy with this. So um, this is another one that I won't dread the thought of getting it back out again. So there is a chance that I may actually work on it again and finish it. And if, if it comes up for a stitch on blue or stitch on purple type, you know, stitch along, I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll work on that one because I like it. <laughs> so this was another um, stitch wine and whips restart that was successful so I'm really happy with both of those and I'm glad I did them glad I took the time to just do it and get it done because now they're both in good standing again um, my next piece is my focus on a finish piece waterfall in Yosemite by Golden Kite this mini version and this is the one that's made me lose my stitchy bug. Every time this comes up in rotation, I'm just like, oh, can I work on something else? Can I do something else? Do I really gotta? <laughs> and I think the problem is it's, I'm right here right now and it's boring. And I, this whole piece is not especially colorful. So maybe that's partly why. Um, however, when I was stitching up here, there are a lot of colors in the rocks and things that you wouldn't expect would be in gray black rocks there's purples and greens and blues so it the actual stitching of it should get better you know in this part especially when you're seeing the picture come alive but currently the light blue light blue mixed with white white mixed with white white all by itself you know just not exciting so my at the end of my last rotation I did this for two two different weeks in June at the end of the last week I decided I was gonna start working a little bit in the rocks as well so I have paid the first row done to like about here so then I decided I'll do a row I mean a whole column in the sky and then I'll allow myself to work I'll still work in columns but as soon as I finish a 10 by 10 square of the confetti in the rock I'll move back up here and do another column of sky and then back continuing down the column until another 10 by 10 is completed then back to do a column so so it'll break it up a little bit and give me some more motivation to see progress because working through here with the only the only thing motivating me is more of the same <laughs> is not a good motivator so if I can go back and forth um, I'm hoping that'll pick things up I'll give it another month or two trying it this way and if if I just can't handle it maybe I'll talk to my husband and be like let's just buy something because I don't want to work on this constantly right now anyways but we'll see so this is what it looked like last time And here's where it is now. I have, I think I probably have like two, two and a half columns. I think I did maybe total two more columns than I showed you last time. And then the first 10 by 10 block over here was like a little partial strip. So I only did, I think, two colors. 
over here um, before the first like on your chart where they have the thick lines of the 10 by 10 blocks where the first little chunk of that was finished um, because the page break was right in between it but that was really all I needed I just needed two colors <laughs> in the rocks before I was like oh yeah I got the sky I can do more sky now you know so I think I think if I try that in July to go back and forth on this one I think I'm hoping that it'll renew my love for this piece and won't be as dreading working on it because I really would like to get it done I know my husband would like having it up on the wall he's more of a bland color person as far as I am more of the you know give me color give me prints and he's just like give me neutrals <laughs> give me blue give me gray give me tan you know so this will be perfect for his aesthetic um it's just not quite as fun for me to stitch but I would like to get that done um and I'm hoping by doing it that way it'll give me a little bit more motivation to make progress on it because I think it works up really quickly it's on 18 count so it's easy to see the sky has big blocks of color so it's fast but I only managed one column a week because I just was never working on it so I'm hoping by giving myself that diversity um, that maybe I can make more progress on it because I won't put it down and just not touch it for extra time so that's that one I'll keep you posted in July um, next week maybe maybe actually no this time since it's today's Friday the 7th so I'm not probably gonna make a video at the beginning of next week because it's that would be really redundant um, I wouldn't have hardly anything to show you maybe a little bit on my little August dog but um, the following the beginning of the following week then I'll have like a week and a half and then at, at that point I'll try to do it every week new videos so in a week and a half I will have put a week in on this one because <clears throat> I decided for July um, my rotation if I were to strictly do fun project focus on a finish project fun project focus on a finish waterfalls would have been this week and I had extra stitching time this week so that could have been a good thing to get some good progress on it but this week was also the 4th of July and my piece for patriotic pride was my snow queen from the world of cross stitching December issue snow queen by Shannon Wasilef because it's red white and blue it's not patriotic I, I realized that <laughs> but it's red white and blue it's got a little bit of red beads in there um, and lots of white and blue this is the piece I'd picked for that Stitch Mania theme. So I, it didn't take a whole lot of convincing for me to do this the first week of July, even though I just finished my week on Iris without a waterfall week in between. So yeah, yeah I know. It didn't take much to convince me. But um, I worked on this one this week because it corresponded with the 4th of July. So next week, I will work on Waterfall again and see how it goes, working back and forth, see if I get any more traction on that one. And hopefully when I film my next video in a little about a week and a half, I'll let you know how it goes, if I can do how far I get on Waterfalls. So we'll see. Um, my Snow Queen has been a joy to stitch. So much fun fun this thing is blinged out it's so beady and sparkly and I'm beating I'm beating and crinicking as I go because I can I don't use Q snaps or hoops or anything so there's nothing stopping me so what I did I started in the middle and I worked my way up and now I'm like completely finishing the picture as I work my way down so as of last night I stayed up till midnight I think which is way later than I usually stay up but um I had to finish this, this section so I stayed up really late <clears throat> and I finished her 
shawl which let me backstitch her bodice so that whole upper torso area is finished now and I have officially the first four 10 by 10 rows completed and then everything that's like touching that down so there's more than that done but those top four are 100% complete and so the next row I think I have a little bit more of her like magic swirls to do, do that so if I have time the rest of the day today that's what I'll be working on but this is where it was last time you saw it and here it is now and I gotta show her sparkles I was trying to take pictures of this for Instagram and it just doesn't work you can tell the camera is like focusing on the sparkle and then not on the sparkle like the beads get shimmery and then they dull again before it actually takes the picture because it's having a hard time focusing with all of that sparkle but she's got red and crystally ice colored beads on her bodice and this thick band of beads on her waistband and beaded sleeve things here I had her necklace and her holly berries and her earring and her crown already beaded. There's Krennic icicles in the trees, which are all finished. All the icicles are finished. And the tree has, I did more on the tree. So this is just going to be a trunk now, which will be a lot, a lot nicer. I started highlighting in the tree on my pattern because most of my, like, mirabilias and, and non-full coverage pieces, I don't highlight. Um, I just wing it and count and it's fine but with this you can see it kind of pretty good here with the shading but when you're up close it's white and it's b5200 3756 which is really 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 pale blue and then 775 i think which is a slightly darker pale blue but on blue fabric next to the white it's really hard to tell the difference so it's hard to know where I've been and what I still need to do so I started to, when I got it back out this week I highlighted some of the stuff I'd already done to kind of show where I needed to go next because this was just a nightmare of twigs and branches and I'm like uh, I don't want to do it so the nightmare of twigs and branches is finished I just have trunk now and then um, I finished her shawl <clears throat> and started she, there's a little krennic right here there will be more of these types of things over here two of I think there's four squirrels on this side but there's some krennic dots and then of course the two different colors of beads so much fun I got even all of these hollies put in here because I still had red thread so I just kept going so I've been I've been beading with one strand of white B5200, which is the white I have for this one, for these ice silver beads and the white beads, and then a strand of red that came with um, what, whatever's charted for her lip color is the is the color I'm using for the red beads, um, and that works fine for me, so I don't have to go mess with whatever plasticky invisible stuff there is. Um, I, I bead on a half stitch, so they're kind of sitting on an angle, which helps them feel, fill the space better, I found. And this is 14 count, so they would possibly still fit up and down, but um, when they're on an angle, especially when there's a tight fill, um, like here, it's nice to have them on an angle, then they, they squeeze into the space real nicely. They don't kind of push each other around so there's that one and there was a small part of me that was like oh maybe I could finish it this week I'll have so much extra st stitching time but that did not happen and I stitched a lot more than I usually do the last few days and I'm really happy with my progress but yeah no way she would have been finished this week but still um, she's coming along. I'm finally out of this nasty, wintry wonderland junk that I was in that made me not want to stitch on this. So now that I'm headed down into the beads and the skirt, it's 
It's gonna be real fun. So I'm really happy with that. And hopefully I'll get a little bit more done on her um, today. This is Friday, so this is the last day of her rotation. So we'll see if I have time. The days I film videos, I don't tend to have as much time to stitch because I have to edit and upload and whatnot. And I guess I could stitch in there in my other room while it's uploading. Just well, actually, while it's uploading is not the problem. It's more the editing. Like, the, the time it takes to film. My, my iPad only has 15-minute chunks. <laughs> so I have to film 15 minutes. I go, you know, take it off onto my computer, which takes a few minutes. Um, lately, I've been, like, uploading those chunks onto my movie editor, you know. So it can be uploading into the movie editor while I'm filming my next chunk. <laughs> So anyways, it's just kind of, and then actually doing the editing takes a little while sometimes. So I don't know how much more I'll get done on that, but we'll see next time I see you how much I get done on that. Plans going forward. My next week I'll be doing <clears throat> um, Waterfall in Yosemite for a week and then the week after that I will do my Christmas in July piece with Mirabilia's Royal Holiday and you just saw her but why not bring her out again this is where I am on her so the goal for her would be to to see how much I can get done. There's no way I could finish this next week either. I mean, let's get real. But um, it would be lovely to finally have her done this year. Then I can start one of my other queens because I should always have a queen going and because I need to have all of them done. So she's my other July piece that's not my waterfall. August has three weeks that are not my waterfall. Or it could, actually. It could have three weeks of waterfall and two fun pieces, but I'm not going to do that, of course. I learned about, um, after my whip parade, a whole bunch of people <laughs> commented that there's a stitch along starting August 1st for Nantucket Rose. And Dina from Half Stitch Cross Stitch is hosting that, and it's a Facebook event. Um, I went to look at it. To sign up for it and there's already at least well when I signed up for it, there's already like 25 people that said they were gonna do it so it's gonna be big and fun so I'm excited about that I have already started um, Nantucket Rose for in February but it's just a tiny little start and I was working on it at the same time as a bunch of other things at that point in my early floss tube life I was trying to do a whole bunch of like themes and stitch mania stuff all all the same I had like two or three or four projects that I wanted to put time in on every single day <clears throat> which for me just doesn't work because my stitching time is so sporadic and minimal that I need only one project per, in a day um, to see anything happen and even on the days when my temperature garden comes up to do another flower Sometimes I'm really excited to do it, and other times I'm like, oh, it's, I want to do it, but it'll take time away from this one, you know? So it, doing more than one in a day is not my favorite thing. And I'm going forward into 2018, I'm looking forward to being done with my temperature garden and only having weekday projects and weekend projects. So it's not going to be more than one thing in a day. I'm looking forward to that. And I already have my eye on something to do for my weekend project next year, but I will wait on that. August is far enough in advance to share with you. Actually, no, I will have more 2018 plans at the end, a little bit later in the video. But I will be doing this with um, the Nantucket Rose Sal. I've, I think she says in the in the comments of that Sal that on Facebook that she set it up to be for the entire year, starting in August 1st. So. You could start it, work on it any time in the next year um, and show your progress. So for now, I'm gonna assign the first week in August, which technically is gonna start 
July 31st because I'm just doing, you know, with weekends bookmarking, bookending the weeks. So this will start July 31st, that first week of August. Um, and see how far I get without, you know, sharing time. It'll be just this one, that first week in August. So that'll be fun. Um, because there was an extra week in August, I felt like I could add that in and not neglect the other things I wanted to do for Stitch Mania. So that worked out nicely. I'm glad August was a big month. So this is, this is where um, this is. Just a little bit of a start. Her sleeve, her dress, some of the grass right in the center. Um, so that'll be fun to pull out again and see. What I will probably do is I'll probably work up to her hand and the flower she's holding and maybe up into her face and then the trees on the top. I don't know that I'll get to the trees, but that's the direction that I'll go and then work my way down to over to the house and everything, you know, after I go up so that I can have the top part done. I like to work from the top down because I, I hold it in at the bottom. So it's nice to have it finished as I work down. So um, my other August pieces besides Waterfall, the, the Stitch Mania theme for August is all creatures great and small. So you stitch on something with animals. And the animal piece that I had been wanting to stitch on for a long time is this creation sampler that I found that I'd started um, probably 18 years ago and wanted to keep going on. <clears throat> and I keep not, I keep thinking about pulling it out and keep finding other excuses of why I shouldn't. And I think it's just because it's old and I haven't, I don't have any momentum anymore. So I would like to give that a week in August. And someone asked me in my comments, I, I haven't gotten around to replying yet, but someone asked in the comments details about that creation piece and I don't have any. I'm going to have to, I have a copy of the chart and I, it might be from a kit that somebody else had and I, I have a copy of their chart. I don't have a copy of the cover, so I don't know the designer, I don't know the brand, I don't know <laughs> anything because this, this, the chart copy I have doesn't say any of that on it. So I will try to maybe Google creation sampler, see if I can find something. I'm, I don't know if I'll be able to find anything. Um, if I do, I'll put it below, but in the description box, um, but no promises because I, I got this from my roommate's aunt like 18 years ago, so I really have no way of finding that information um, again at this point, unless I can somehow find it online. Um, the other thing in August, the first week in August will be Nantucket Rose. The second week will actually be um, a stitching shelf because that second week in August includes World Cross Stitch Day, which I would be remiss if I did not celebrate. So this is a ladies stitching throughout history, so I thought that would be perfect. And so many people are working on this right now that it's making me want to get it out again. So I will get it out again, second week in August. Um, and then, so I'll have two weeks of non-waterfall pieces in August and then I'll work on Waterfall in Yosemite again and then the creation piece and then Waterfall in Yosemite for the last week. So this is how far I am on a stitching shelf, max colors, large format chart. A little bit of this column is already started so I'm hoping to, you know, see how far I can get on this first page. Probably not a page finish in that first week, but you never know if I have the whole week to work on it, um, I'm hoping at least finish that first column, maybe maybe finish the second column. Um, it's anybody's guess, really, how much I'll get done on that. So those are my August plans. But as I as I've, if I'm 
I think I'd like to start filming every week if I can and I may miss a week here and there if life just happens and it's it's impossible to film and that's just the way life goes but I would like to film more frequently so that I don't have quite as much to show each time hopefully they'll be shorter and the things that I share with you will be more recent in my history and I'll be able to like have more little details that rather than having forgotten them all other than what I've written down so I think it'll go better I didn't want to have to do it every week because I at first I was thinking every week would be I know hard to get find the time to make a video but then the more I was thinking about it it seems like the weekly ones might be quicker because I won't have as much to gather and so therefore I may not take as long and then I may not take as long to edit and so we'll see if it turns out like they're just as long then who knows but I'm hoping they'll be shorter for it'll be help for, help everybody so some of the 2018 things I've already been thinking about which is a little bit funny but I know a few others of you uh, Kellyanne um, she was talking about her 2018 plans um, Anne from Little Bird Stitches, she's starting thinking about 2018. She wants to do a focus on full coverage pieces, and she is going to host a Facebook group for that starting in October, I think. is She's going to put that together. Um, I'll definitely be joining that because if, I mean, I have full coverage. That's, that's a given. I like the big pieces. So I will be joining her group. I don't know how that will all work in with what other things I want to do, but I thought I should join that and see how much of those things I could participate in. So that's um, going to be like a focus on full coverage for 2018. And I was looking through the Stitch Mania cells this coming, for this coming year. They're already posted for 2018. There's a lot of them. And this past year, I've kind of stuck with like the month-long themes and tried to fit my whips in according to that. Um, <clears throat> and at the beginning of the year, I was also doing like the color a day and full coverage on the fifth and all that kind of stuff. And that's just too much for me to keep track of at this point. So I think I'm going to forego most of that. And for most of the year, I'll probably just stitch on what I want to stitch on. And I have a lot of full coverage pieces, so whatever I do will probably also line up with uh, Anne's full coverage group. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to work on what I want to work on, likely still in like the week at a time format, because that seems to be really working for me. I like the weekends bookmark, no, bookending a single project for the week. I kind of like how that's been rolling. Um, so I, I have plans for a new weekend project next year, <coughs> which I will share after I get it. I don't have it yet. I have fabric, and I know what I want to put on it, so we'll see when that comes to me. Um, but I did see they had several daily challenges that I don't... I don't remember if I did the Olympics one last year or not. This year was Jessie Marie's birthday sale, and while that one was a similar thing where you have a a different theme for every day and you pick a whip or a start to go with that theme for a period of like a couple weeks or something, um, that sounds, sounds kind of interesting at first glance, but at that point in my May, I think was just ridiculous um or april i think that might have been april i was just i was too too fresh off of the multiple whips per day kind of thing i had been trying at the beginning of the year and working on something new every day just wasn't what i wanted to do right then and i was really in getting into the groove of a whole week on something and um i wanted to stick with that so I didn't participate in Jesse's birthday, but there were five daily challenges um, listed on the Sal's, Stitch Mania Sal's for 2018. 
And I decided to tentatively per participate in three of them because, um, and then the rest of the year I will do my own thing. I'll spend at least a week on projects and see nice progress, but the little daily ones can sometimes be fun to like pull out things that you wouldn't normally get to. And something somebody said in a recent floss tube video clicked with that reasoning where it will help renew your love for that piece if you put a little bit of work into it. Cause I have noticed a lot of my old whips, I don't want to get them out again cause they're so old. It's been 10, 15 years, 20 years since I've worked on it. And it's just not, it's just not my, the love for it isn't there right now, even though it's beautiful, just because I haven't worked on it in so long and it's getting, getting my head wrapped around what is that piece entails is kind of a, I don't know. It's just a mental block there, like that creation piece. So I'm hoping by doing some of those daily ones that I will kind of force myself to just do it and get in, get out some of the random whips I have, and then maybe that will kind of rekindle some interest in them, <clears throat> even more than like the whip parade I just did is nice, but actually working on them again for at least a day might be nice. So. I decided to pick the three generic ones. Um, there's a couple birthday cells for in Stitch Mania, but um, I thought I would just pick the general ones because I liked the, the themes with those ones. So there's a Winter Olympics in February, I think. I could be wrong. There's a Winter Olympics. There's a World Cup that I think was like in May or something. And then the election, mid midterm elections in November. So there were three of them that were kind of general um, themes that I could kind of pick for. And I think they're each about two weeks long. So that was my plan that I will do what I want to do most of the year, but then those three daily challenges, I will tentatively say that I will participate in those. And I don't know if I'm going to do Stitch Mania next year because I don't know if I'm going to have enough to s new things to start. I'm already, like, I, I feel really maxed out. And yes, we're just on the tail end of Stitch Mania this year. Um, there's a lot of new things I, I have on my wish list, a lot of things in my stash still, but I don't know that I want to start that many all at once. We'll see. When April comes around next year and everybody's saying, oh, this is what I'm going to do for Stitch Media, we'll see if I can hold out. Because this past year I thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And then I ended up doing five new starts. So we'll, we'll reserve judgment for Stitch Media next year until like mid-April mid and see how I'm feeling then. But <clears throat> we'll see. You know how plans can change. So tentatively plan is to do more frequent videos. I still will hope to do like tutorials and stitch with me type videos with the different methods that I use. So you can kind of see how I do things. Um, those types of videos are really hard to do in the summertime it seems because there's just too many people around all the time. But I should have a little bit more time this fall um, because my youngest will be doing preschool a few days a week, so I will be kid-free three mornings a week, which will be very exciting. So um, one of those mornings is already going to be reserved for a floss tube filming. So I may also do some stitch with me on the same morning that I do my actual update, if my update doesn't take that long. So we'll see how that goes. And I look forward to getting back into Waterfall in Yosemite next, this coming week and see, see if I can get more traction on that. So see how that goes. And I hope to get more caught up on floss tube. I'd rather be a few days behind than a few weeks behind for sure. So I think I'm a little over a week behind. If you see me popping up, <laughs> commenting like two weeks after you filmed a video, just know I love all of you and I, I don't, I don't 
follow everybody because that's just impossible to stay on track. But I do follow a lot of people and and I want to keep up with it. And I keep adding a few new ones here and there, which doesn't help because then you have more people to watch. So it's all good. I just hope that I can get a little bit closer to current um, in the near future. So we'll see how that goes. Until next time, happy stitching.